Hey guys, um, this is a video, um, again, a little bit about consciousness, more about the scientific worldview and trying to put it in perspective. And what I mean by the scientific worldview, I mean the modern scientific worldview. Um, so, we have a very... Now, scientists might argue they, they, they may not, but I think there are some particular assumptions in, in science that have their roots in perhaps a cultural bias, seeing, seeing the world as a mechanical universe, a universe ruled by laws and um, basically almost like a machine that's very describable. I mean, there are some scientists who say, you know, the human body is just a very complex machine that we can, once we learn the rules, we can change them. I don't know if that's necessarily a good view uh, or even a scientific view, the mechanical view of the world. Um, I mean, We've uh, in the Holons Network. We've been saying a lot of a lot about you know growth and organic view of nature and things like that. But um, a scientist might argue that uh, growth is too vague a term. It's it's uh, the scientist might say you know it, things appear to grow, but really there's there's such there's such detailed uh, processes at work here. Um, you say that plant grows, but what does grow really mean? If you really analyze it, there's all of these complex chemical, biological uh, interactions that create this plant, that make it grow, as you say. Um, there's all these processes, photosynthesis, how, the, how it intakes water, xylem and phloem, there's all these uh, intricate details. And yes, it's more mechanical because there's um, action and reaction and a series of those things that uh, create this. But as a, a general term, uh, mechanical perhaps is a little bit too strong of a word, or perhaps a little bit too simplistic of a word, for a universe which is often emergent, um, gets more complex over time, and, and seems to be able to grow out of itself, to continue to create novel and new forms of organization. I think organization is a good term, I think synergy is a good term, and growth from a cultural or perhaps phenomenological perspective is very accurate. Keep keep the details of, you know, photosynthesis, etc. Of course we need those those things to describe the world. But I think there are bigger pictures that we can take that can coincide with the scientific descriptions of the world. For instance, we don't need to um, for, I, I guess you I, I guess I might say that the idea that things grow is very important. The idea that things are capable of developing uh, is very important. Um, the sort of analytical top-down view of the world in which you can add a whole bunch of parts and then expect them to react misses the synergy between those parts that create this, this uh, that bring whatever this organism we're talking about to life. Um, the, the parts between the parts, the interaction, the meeting points in life is uh, what's most important because that synergy, that space between the, between the points is what um, creates the emergent properties. So synergy, as that's what it's called, um, would perhaps be a more appropriate term. The world is synergistic, the world is developmental, the world is emergent. And um, if we see ourselves instead as emergent beings instead of machines that we can operate on and manipulate, um, perhaps is a simplistic and earlier uh, perception of reality that I, I think has to do with our our place in the universe right now. We are, uh, science tries to describe as best it can objectifying the world, but to objectify the world you, you kind of have to conceptualize it. You, you have to see a small segment instead of seeing the greater picture. So the the wonders of science, of modern science at least, come at a price. They come at a price in that we miss bigger pictures, we perhaps are not as long, um, long-term long thinking, and our our basic consciousness or our world view, um, just to read my notes here, um, we have a world view that overemphasizes particular components um, of reality. Thimble, symbols, symbols uh, thought, structure, the objectification, um, as distinct rather than emergent from nature, or, or rather, consciousness is still in the process of learning its own limitations of objectifying the world. We have a process where we think 
the world is as we think it is. Um, now, some scientists would be like, ah, oh, that's nonsense, we're always changing the way we think. That's true, but there still are assumptions as you go along that you have to go along with. Uh, assumptions about the world, assumptions that we can know things about the world, that we can repeat experiments, that we can know things and they can continue to repeat them and sort of create theorems and laws and so on and so forth. So, uh, it's still based upon a very physical and um, sort of forceful way of, of we objectify the world and then we look for ways to um, validate that objectification. Uh, in a sense, let's say we, uh, to try to put it in a bigger perspective, let's say there's these beings in a two-dimensional world. They can see things and it's two-dimensional, but really reality is multi-dimensional. There's dozens of dimensions perhaps, or is there 12? I don't know. There's, there's so many more dimensions, but these beings um, can only see in the two dimensions. So they discern and, and objectify the world according to the laws of two dimensions. And when perhaps a three-dimensional occurrence happens, they interpret it according to the two-dimensional uh, understanding. So what I'm saying is there is a particular limit to our mode of thinking that is, as Alan Watts might say, inherently violent in that it forces reality to conform to objectification and analysis rather than... Um, our own consciousness adapt and, 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 and become more pliable and expand into the reality that's out there. So there's a particular conservatism in our mode of thinking, in our, in our structure of consciousness. And this all may be, I don't know if this is um, too complex for everybody, but um, uh, just to read off a little bit more of my notes. So we have not learned the more emergent, natural types of thinking and feeling which are aware of their own forcing. For instance, if we become aware that we're objectifying the world and that perhaps there are limitations to it, then that's good. That awareness itself creates a distinction in which we recognize the inherent limitation and then perhaps we don't do it as much. Perhaps we explore alternate methods and, root and, and, and roots to understanding the world. So, um, we're, we're, we're forcing the world into boxes and we attempt to, uh, instead of attempting to learn the complex interconnectedness that the universe exhibits effortlessly. So, um, in short, we still are in the process of waking up to the world through growing um, and, and, and creating more sensitivity. We have a very two-dimensional uh, obser observation of the world, and what we really have to develop is three-dimensional, four-dimensional, and I don't know why, but these, this dimensional thing is, uh, keeps popping up this sort of developmental, um, I guess you could say, growth. We're, we're sort of growing new senses in ourselves that can connect to higher um, realities and, and bigger realities. Um, and I don't even mean physically bigger, but just vastly more intricate and bigger in the sense that they expand our consciousness and they expand our understanding of ourselves in the world. So it's, this is not really a critique of the way we think right now, it's, it's really just a observing a limitation in our mode of thinking, of objectifying the world, that perhaps needs to be transcended in order to understand what's going on. We're, we're in the midst of a lot of paradigm shifts in this century um, with science, with, with psychology. We still have a very mechanical view of the world, and it may be important for us to begin to embrace new views that are based on sound reasoning, but that go beyond reasoning, that go into perhaps more multi-dimensional thinking. And I will leave this video at that. Um, please make a response or a comment or send me a message, whatever you like to do. Thanks for listening.